Magic moments. What can Wanda do? Magic moments. Change the MCU. We've come a long way since magic was a dirty word in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The odd man out in the Avengers with the Shakespeare in the park look. Does mother know you wear as her drapes? Had to explain his magic in Arthur C. Clarke terms. That any technology sufficiently advanced appears as magic. But his adopted brother and which mother never signed off on that. And now they have enough company to redefine the MCU for Phase 4. When we first met the Marvel Cinematic Universe, realism was all the rage in comic book adaptations. With the success of Nolan's Batman trilogy, the prevailing wisdom was that superhero series had to ground itself in reality. Eventually though, the more realistic the superhero movies got, the more you started thinking about how Wayne could spend that Batmobile money on improving the conditions at Arkham Asylum. That did mean that when the first heroes of the MCU were introduced, they came from the super science camp people with suits of techno armor or who are science experiments. There are other camps where superheroes come from in the world of Marvel. No sooner had the Super STEM squad assembled than the space group started arriving. People from Thor's end of the hammer. The Guardians of the Galaxy and Thanos fit in with the high-tech heroes that became the defining feature of the Infinity Saga. During that time, the street-level heroes, the ones more prone to fighting Kingpin and ninjas than they are Thanos and space armies, got a moment in the sun over at Netflix with the Defenders series of shows and mutants until recently have been locked away over at Fox. But lurking around in the Infinity Saga was the one group that was initially thought incompatible, building itself up and ready to take center stage in Phase 4, and that's the magical characters. Technically, they've always been there. Thor may have defined his world's magic as science for a more advanced people, but Loki and Frigga never really signed off on that description. But when the Mind Stone unlocked Wanda's chaos magic powers, the best geek squad at S.H.I.E.L.D. had to describe what she could do was she's weird. They didn't know the half of it. Now that Thanos has come and gone and come and gone again, it's time for the academic decathlon champs and their jock friends to give center stage to the theater kids. Doctor Strange was the first one to embrace magic, even if the ancient one had to explain it in scientific terms to the advanced surgeon. But in our incredible opening salvo for the MCU has set a tone for the unapologetic magic wrecking shop with the promise of much more to come. Up until the very end of WandaVision, Wanda Maximoff was just Wanda who could move things with her mind and read your mind and make your mind show you really weird stuff. But when she uncorked all of her grief in a burst of magic that transformed Westview, New Jersey, she entered a whole new level of magic power. Enough to attract a centuries-old witch named Agatha who wanted in on that kind of power, only to find out that Wanda wasn't just weird, she was a witch so powerful that even mythical beings thought she was a myth. That's a level of prominence that comic fans have been waiting for, as Wanda Maximoff as the Scarlet Witch has been a barely checked fount of magical power in the comics for years, finding herself at the center of magical events that have reshaped the entire Marvel Universe. Wanda and her controversial urban renewal program are just the tip of the iceberg for magic in Phase 4. We know for sure that Wanda appears in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness alongside Baron Too Many Sorcerers Mordo. If Doctor Strange and the Ancient One bending the rules of magic was enough for Mordo to decide that people can't be trusted with that power, Wanda rewriting Westview isn't going to sit well with them. But having a super powerful witch who is just called out as more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme showing up in the Sorcerer Supreme's movie doesn't seem that remarkable. But over in Queens, the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man will also be getting a visit from the Wizard of the Village. No wizards. Doctor Strange is a sorcerer. A sorcerer is a wizard without a hat. Sorry, sorcerer. With both Doctor Strange and Spider-Man No Way Home filming at the same time, we don't expect to see a lot of Strange in Spidey's third outing. With the announcement of Jamie Foxx reprising his role as Electro from the Amazing Spider-Man series, seems to be dipping deep into the multiverse. Or he's going to be good friends with Ralph Boner. Metacasting aside, the multiverse has been slowly growing in prominence in the MCU. For Doctor Strange, manipulating energy from other dimensions is the mechanism that makes magic work. When Bruce Banner went to borrow the Ancient One's favorite accessory, she explained to the half-man, half-brute about the problem of alternate timelines, just in time for Loki to grab the Tesseract and jump into one of his own. Coming in June, we'll get to see the results of that spontaneous trip by the alternate timeline Loki, who finds himself at the Time Variance Authority. The TVA are the time cops of the Marvel Universe, only without the splits. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. They're also the ones who might take objection to folks from one of the timelines taking a trip through the Quantum Realm to get a redo on their head-to-head -head with Thanos. 
Waiting in the wings, though it's not clear if it's Phase 4 or 5, or even if faces have any meaning anymore, is the Daywalker himself, Blade. The half-vampire, Vampire Hunter, brings with him an entire supernatural world with him. While there are heroes and villains that sit in one camp or another, the barriers between those classes aren't exactly hard and fast. In the pages of the comics, for instance, the Scarlet Witch is both the heretical Scarlet Witch, a powerful lineage of witches, and a keystone for the 616 reality, but she's also a mutant. And an experiment with revelations that the High Evolutionary has had a hand in tinkering with her powers at a young age. Lurking in that vague phase between Phase 4 and 5 lies one of the biggest and most iconic characters that decided there was no reason to choose between science and magic. With the announcement of the upcoming Fantastic Four movie, their arch enemy can't be far behind. The leader of Latveria, former Reed Richards' bestie, and Man in the Iron Mask is the signature villain for the Fantastic Four. Perhaps one of the biggest things that previous Fantastic Four movies have struggled against is finding a way to establish the scope of Marvel's first family. It's a world of over-the-top super science, ominous menaces from space like Galactus, and the power-hungry Latverian monarch who wields magic as easily as he does his super science doomsday weapon. What does all this mean for Phase 4 and the role of magic? The favorite by a mile for just about everyone is the House of M storyline that revolved around the Scarlet Witch's power and how her grief affected the way she used it. Comic book Wanda found out that her kids were actually shards of Mephisto's soul. Figuring that would be too much for Wanda to handle, Agatha removed any memory of those kids, which went all kinds of wrong when the spell wore off. Charles Xavier and Doctor Strange tried to give her the tools to cope with that without unleashing chaos magic willy-nilly, but it didn't take. And she did to the world what the MCU's Wanda just did to Westview, New Jersey. The end result was far fewer mutants in the MCU universe than before, and fans have felt that this is the way that the MCU can bring mutants into the MCU, which is not bad. But that's not the only consequence of magic in the MCU. For the MCU, magic and multiverses are connected. And the more the multiverse starts to interact with the MCU, the more important magicians become. House of M could end up being only the beginning. A necessary first step, where reckless magicians create enough unintended consequences, weakening the barriers between worlds and allowing for other magic or multiverse stories. Like Damnation, where Doctor Strange ended up bringing back Las Vegas from the multiverse, only to find Mephisto had set up shop. If we keep predicting Mephisto, it's bound to happen eventually, right? But on an even larger scale, Phase 4's magic problems and the multiverse could end up teeing the MCU up in the same way that Loki and uncovering the Infinity Stones teed up Thanos and the Infinity Saga. With magic users like the Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange, Agatha, Mordo, alternate timeline Loki, they can all create enough chaos to bring a war between those realities in order to clean up all the timelines. A secret war, one might say, huh? With the MCU combining other genres with their superhero stories, it's only a matter of time before they get around to musicals. Sitcoms would have seemed impossible not so long ago. This magic moment.